Nobody likes wasting money, so Intel's pitch is a little confusing. With our state-of-the-art Core i9-13900K, you'll get 90% of the performance at 100% of the price. Wait, what? It's true though. This thing runs so hot that it is literally impossible to cool through conventional means, which is why today is gonna be a little unconventional. This used to be the domain of only the boldest modders and tinkerers, but now anyone can just pick up a kit from EK's web shop and go beyond the red line. This is a direct dye cooler, and with it, you can drop your CPU temperatures by up to 20 degrees, or so they say. All it takes is potentially killing your $600 CPU and definitely voiding your warranty. Will our Core i9-13900K finally see its full potential? Will it even see tomorrow? Or will it direct die without passing go or collecting $200? From our sponsor. Build Redux. Build Redux builds fully customizable gaming PCs suitable for any budget. Pick your favorite games and see how they perform using their online PC builder. Head to buildredux.com slash Linus and create your new rig today. EK clearly knows me far too well. Number 69 of 100 and a hand signed note. You always do the craziest we have no doubt you will put it to good use. Absolutely, man, this thing is gorgeous. And it's more than just a pretty face. Designed in collaboration with Der Bauer, the Quantum Velocity Squared Direct Die takes the guesswork out of removing the protective heat spreader from your CPU and cooling the silicon die directly. Before we can do that, I need to take our CPU out of our system, just tested so we know how much of an improvement the direct die cooler actually made. That's gonna take a minute, so why don't we have a look at the accessory package that comes with the Quantum Velocity Squared direct die. First up is a Derbauer branded CPU removal tool. This isn't the only way to remove the IHS from your CPU, but it is by far the easiest. We've also got some Thermal Grizzly Conductonaut liquid metal compound. I'm not 100% sold on going liquid metal on this project, but I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. A little spreading tool, some Allen wrenches, and we've got a little foam pad. This is critical because it's right in the name, liquid metal. If it drips or leaks onto something that it's not supposed to, it can easily short and even kill your system. We've <clears throat> personally experienced that. Hey, there it is, look at that, 13900K. It's time for your surgery, buddy. The directions. Remove the CPU from the socket. Install the deleted CPU in the socket. Genius. The CPU goes into the deleting tool here. All right. Then I'm pretty sure it's gonna be in the 13th gen orientation out of the box. So we'll just go ahead and put that in there. Start tightening this boy. Uh, wait a second. No, no, don't worry, it's fine. Oh, I'm, I'm a little bit worried because <laughs> there's a triangle right there and there's a triangle in there. And if you push it the wrong way, mm -hmm. you remove capacitors. So we can just very simply check it. We don't hit those caps, we're fine. Now all we need to do is, ah, this always makes me extremely uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't love this step. You don't heat it up or anything? Oh yeah, do you? No. I am potentially one of the people in the world that's deleted the most CPUs. Oh, that sounded good. Did it? Yeah. That did not sound that good. Oh, that sounded fine. I don't like this, Alex. I think this is wrong. Okay, what about you don't do that? What about you don't do that? As I was saying before, I'm pretty sure that I'm one of the people in the world that has deleted the most CPUs, because at LTX I did hundreds. Oh yeah, speaking of which, <laughs> we are going to have a CPU deleting booth at LTX again this year. So if you wanna try it on a dummy CPU before doing it on your own, it's the perfect place to do it. See you there. Or just do it on your CPU there. Like that's what a lot of people did. No. Yeah, maybe don't do that. Percussive maintenance, it's fine. We're bringing out the big guns, the heat guns. Nah. Nah. Come on. What the heck? <laughs> it does not want to come off. Fetch me a hammer. Wait, where are you? Okay, yeah. This is better than frying? Debatable. I don't love this. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, wait. Uh. Well, that seems pretty bad. Wow. Ha ha! Frickin' finally! <laughs> it totally was the silicone adhesive. Roman, if you're watching, you might want to give her a little more pull distance on this one. Just a touch more. Now I know what you're thinking. That looked awful. Oh, and hey Linus, you said protective heat spreader. Why would I remove that? Okay, 
That's a good question, and there are a couple of reasons. First is that even for something with high thermal conductivity like copper, adding thickness, adding distance that the heat needs to travel is going to add thermal resistance. Second, for every material change, okay, like as we move from one into the next, there are additional losses in the heat transfer since it can actually reflect off the surfaces of those materials. So the closer we can get our cooling to the heat source, the better. Which raises another question, really, and that's why do Intel and AMD include these things then if they make cooling worse and, in some cases, darn near impossible? Well, to a certain point, they actually help, especially with air coolers. It can be better to spread the heat out a little bit from that small heat generating die to this larger heat spreader so you can fit more heat pipes across the hot part of the chip. And speaking of heat pipes, the die itself can get so hot that any heat pipe touching it can end up boiling, which is supposed to happen, but overboiling to the point where it dries out and stops being effective. It also is protective. The die is extremely fragile, and back before IHSs were common, it was pretty commonplace to see users accidentally crack them and then post dead die porn on the forums. Do you want to explain that we're removing the stock mounting mechanism? Because obviously this is, you know, what mounts it. I think you just did. And aside from it being impossible to mount this thing with the stock hardware, if we were to try to put our original cooler back in here, it wouldn't be able to reach it because... Ah! It's fine, Al, it's chill. It's a good thing that there's no IHS on there to protect it. This will go on here, see? And it didn't touch it. See, it can't touch it, it can't reach. And there's the other problem of if it did touch it, it would also touch all of these capacitors. In the past, they'd get around the problem of your cooler hitting all of the capacitors and stuff by just making it super duper small. Problem is though, this right here, is just not as good at cooling as this. And also you put a lot of different types of fittings in here and they hit each other. We're installing the die guard, um, which involves putting the die back into the socket yet again, but not having it fall out this time. With these parts machined out to make sure it doesn't bump any of the caps or anything, this little boy sits bop, right on there. Look at that. That's how we're gonna hold the CPU in place now. Have I mentioned that we make the perfect tool for these kinds of delicate operations? The LTT screwdriver has a strong magnet so you won't lose those little proprietary mounting hardware pieces. And the perfect knurling for putting these things in nice and delicately. Now, this is another thing that is special about this block. Instead of having a large contact patch on the bottom, it has a small raised one. So that's gonna help us avoid interfering with any kind of hold down or die guard product. And EK says that the fins on the inside are actually cut closer to the die to help with heat transfer. We also know that the density of those fins is extremely high here and relatively low out here where they aren't really gonna be doing that much. Now under normal circumstances, we just put a glob of thermal paste in the middle of a chip and then we count on the contact pressure from the cooler to spread it out. Not so here. We absolutely need to spread this out to cover all parts of the die because even a tiny little air pocket could cause a hot spot in a place where maybe there is no thermal sensor and it could just fry itself into oblivion. Going back to the whole IHS is a heat spreader thing, that normally solves that problem. Seems pretty good to me. Do we put this on now? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, this is so bad. Doing things such that the camera can see it is so much harder than yeah. doing things such that. I know, right? All right. Oh, before you, before, before you oh, go, before you go. Before, uh, a little, oh, little yeah, yeah, side. Yeah. Just to fill in any little micro gaps. Okay, is it lined up? I don't know. Well, can you look? You're the one on the front. Well, yeah, that's, that's exactly why I can't see. You can't see much over here too. It feels like they're threading. Did you guys drain the loop? Mm, I mean, a little. You're just gonna. Ah, 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 ah. What did ah. you think was gonna happen? <laughs> ah. Hey, there we go. All right, success. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this goes on here. Boop. Uh. I'm sure you can make that work. Okay, I'm kind of feeling this length. Whoa, 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 whoa. That looks way too short now. No, dog. Do you think this is my first rodeo? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay. Hey, are we ready? Yeah. Look at that. That's a bright computer. 
New CPU installed, F1 to run setup, let's go. Okay, it's at 85 degrees, which is, oh, 64. Huh, that's not good. This should be working very, very well right now. And it is not. The odds of immediate catastrophic failure are much higher when you don't have an integrated heat spreader on. Oh, well, hold on a second, core temperatures, here we go. It's an average of 29, maybe that isn't that far off. Okay, fine. Roman suggested that we start by doing like a single threaded Cinebench or maybe like a, a quad threaded benchmark of some sort rather than hit the whole CPU at once. But we're just gonna do the whole thing. <laughs> I thought you were actually gonna take his advice for a second there. Okay, so we've got a hot core. I'm gonna stop this. Yeah, yeah. We might need to remount it. Yeah. This top P core, P core zero went to 99 degrees immediately. And actually P core two is looking pretty bad too. Here we go, let's put on some more conduct. Oh God, that's a lot. I sucked up too much. Crap. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's go. Multi-core and hello. Okay. There we go. That's more like it. This is quite consistent. That's what we want to see. Also, that's really chilly. 69 degrees on the core, maximum. Nice. So that's 11 degrees lower than stock, but we also hit a much higher score. So stock was 3660 or 36600. Wow, really? Yeah. We got 700 points just from running a little bit cooler. Okay, well this is great. What next? Well, we can just hit it with Prime 95, do an actual like test. Small FFTs, okay. Yeah. Hit All it. Right, geez. 89 degrees was the max before after 30 minutes. I know it's only been a few minutes, but this is really uh, good. Yeah, so it's been, what, five minutes now? It hit its max temperature last time after 11. I just looked it up. Oh, our package power is only 180 watts. Well, it's stock, just pure stock. Oh, well that's boring. Let's make it turbo more. So our max there was 61 degrees. It would have gotten hotter, but at the same time. Not much. Yeah, that was pretty good. It's just dual triple radiators. That water wasn't gonna heat up much with only a CPU dumping heat into it. Remove all limits. Boom. Oh my God. It's not hot at all. Hottest core maximum, 69 degrees again. Nice. So we just need to overclock it. Yeah, this is amazing. It's tamed. She's ripping. Cinebench seems to hit it a little harder than Prime 95. Hottest oh, yeah. core 72. How many wadi watts is it drawing? Oh, I'll check. Max 230. 230 still, huh? And 37320, same score. Overclocking time then. But do we overclock with this? This is getting cold. <laughs> yes. Okay, are we going for a live swap here? All right, you ready, Alex? With no. Uh... Oh, we need to plug it in. Yeah, oh, we need to move fast yeah, because. We need to move very fast. No water movement. Uh, this CPU is gonna be getting... Yeah, especially since there's just air in there right pretty now. Pretty toasty. We need our sketchy 240 volt cable. It's been in zero videos. Shh, shh, shh. Okay, plugged in. I okay, guess you I'm saw the light. Okay, I'm working on it. Hold on, hold on, I'm gonna start a, I'm gonna start a load. Oh, oh it's all at 100. Oh, start it, start it, start it. Hold on, hold on, it. I'm working on it. Start it, start it. It's not turning on, Alex! Stop it! Why is it uh, not? The switch wasn't on. Hello? Fry the CPU. No, I don't wanna fry the CPU. There we go. Oh, oh geez. shoot, those fittings are not made for that. Oh my God, there's water everywhere, David. Okay, we need to, hold on, I'm gonna turn it off. Um, we need to do a bit of a fitting swap. The good news is that so much of the water drained out of the block that it's empty. We don't have much time. We're at 56 degrees on that CPU. All right, try again? Yeah. Oh, there we oh, go. Oh, there it goes, it, she <laughs> dropped. This chills fast. We're down to 11 degrees right now. We wanna just run a Cinebench and see how hot it gets. Sure. So 49 degrees. Wow. 38,000 points. Without doing anything to it. We've done nothing yet. I have XTU open yet, but I haven't touched it. I bet with how loud I talk, my levels are probably about the same as Alex's on his mic. <laughs> Here we go. This is a little bit safer. I believe. Okay. She works. 350 watts. And still 76 degrees. Nowhere near the limit. This is working very well. 41. <laughs> so that actually took the six gigahertz that time, I believe. Okay. Why don't you give the other two cores six then? The P cores, I mean. Oh. Let's try five uh, nine and six one. Uh, we can probably even give it more voltage. Oh god. It was it was happy there. Okay. One, two, five, <laughs> sure. Six two? Do okay, you think we can do Alex, it? Alex, you don't have to do three <laughs> steps in one. 
Wow. That's a lot of voltage. She's not gonna it's do more than 350 watts. We're power limited for the first time. How'd we do? Well, the bad news is I still managed to hit 100 degrees on the CPU. Why Good news, it was drawing 510 watts at the time. This board will just give you power. It can draw like 700 watts if you want. What it, does that look like in terms of Cinebench then? Very fast, extremely fast. It also is worth noting that that was with the voltages pretty high. You don't get any more performance after about 480 watts. This block is dangerously close to condensation territory here. Oh yeah. That's a rock solid six gigahertz on all performance cores. That yeah. is wild. And like the temps are getting high. Some of them are getting into the 90s but still reasonable. 480 watts. Yep, it's doing it. <laughs> now for funsies, there's also a GPU overclock. It's just a little one. You can't do too much because like, you know, voltage Nvidia. limits, yeah. yeah. If we were able to put like a voltage controller onto that, we could get a lot more. Highest temp I've seen, 37 degrees so far. Wow. Fun fact, pretty much all GPUs have no IHS, so they are direct die cooled right out of the box. That's a, for, for a couple of reasons. One is that an IHS adds Z height, which would make your graphics card thicker, which is undesirable, or at least it was until recently. And number two, they're not meant to be user serviceable, so there's very little risk of anyone accidentally cracking their die. Oh, and right, three, because again, of size and space constraints, they wanna get the best possible cooling out of these things, so going directly to the die is gonna give them the best shot at that. They also tend to be larger, so having just two heat pipes on it and them drying out is less of a concern. They're a little less power dense. This is stupid. You hit 6.3 on a single core? Yeah. It'll do two cores, 6.3. 6.4, dead. In that case, I think it's fair to say that we are not thermally limited. No, we wow. are at the limits of this silicon right now. To be clear, we're not talking about going deep, deep sub-zero with liquid nitrogen or liquid helium or anything like that. The, the, the physics of the silicon changes significantly at those kinds of temperatures. We're talking within reason at the limits of the silicon. But we might have also just got a package from Elmer Labs. Oh, are you really doing that? <laughs> Get subscribed. What makes this a CPU test? Is it just that it's really simulation heavy or is that it's actually rendered on the CPU? It's rendered on the CPU. Yeah, this is normally like 10 FPS. We can't set any records because that's held by like 64 core Threadrippers. But that was like 45, 50 FPS. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's actually a pretty bad run for this system. We normally get more around 19, but. We also normally get this message from our sponsor, Bitdefender. Bitdefender is committed to protecting and improving the online experience of their users all around the world. They do this by detecting and stopping ransomware, adware, malware, and web attacks with minimal to no slowdown on your devices. Your other apps, won't feel a thing. Bitdefender builds their solutions with the user at the forefront. That means multi-layered protection, instant reactions to online threats, and security for your personal info and your digital identity. With tools like a password manager and a Wi-Fi security advisor, you know Bitdefender has your back. If you want to learn why AV Comparatives called Bitdefender Security their product of the year in 2022, click the link in the video description. If you guys enjoyed this video, why don't you check out the time we cooled a PC with fire? Actually. Well, liquid propane, but who's keeping track? It was bear on fire. How fast do 4090s go? Boost clocks, 2.52. Okay, we're at 2745 there. Oh, okay. Very fast. And at like 27 degrees. Good boy.